Hey y'all, this is Dawn, aka the Inactive Nanny, coming to you guys live and in living color from Inactive Nanny's world, where love and play are interacting. First, let me say, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, little heartbeats, parents, grandparents, teachers, nannies, uh, parents, anybody else that are taking care of, loving on, teaching, nurturing, our littles, happy, just everybody in general, Happy New Year. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed your holiday. I hope you guys are just ready to start new year, this new year off fresh. 2024 is going to be amazing. We're going to make it a great one. We, we all are going to just do our best. We're going to come in come in strong, or we're going to leave out the same way. So anyway, I wanted to say, before we get started with the um, episode tonight, I do want to say Happy New Year, you guys. Um, <laughs> some of us have to be ready to go back to work. Like, I have to go back tomorrow after being out for over two weeks. So my children will be going back between tomorrow and maybe Thursday, somewhere along in there. So we all got to get ready to go back to real life. But anyway, I have enjoyed my time off. I have enjoyed the holidays. I have enjoyed spending time with my family. But yeah, <laughs> we got to get ready to go back in. But anyway, Happy New Year, you guys. Um, I'm excited to be coming on, on with you guys. And I'm ready. We're going to do a um, story time tonight. I'm actually going to start sort of trying to formulate different, other different things with episodes and stuff. Especially now that we're going to be on YouTube and everything. So y'all will be sort of seeing and hearing some news and exciting things in the episodes to come for this year. But tonight we're going to do, I, originally I was going to do it on last night because most of the time I do record the episodes on Sundays, but I was like, well, tomorrow's New Year, so I'll just come on and do it for New Year. We'll just do a New Year episode. So anyway, that's why I did it tonight. But anyway, um, we're going to do a story time, and I, I believe one of the books that I'm reading tonight, I've actually read before, and uh, it's been a little while ago, but it's actually one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books of all time as far as children's books it makes my soul smile like I love this book when I heard it read on another um YouTube channel y'all I just it was it was like it just took me back into my childhood it just made my it made my my I guess my childlike heart smile it made me happy and so I wanted to come on tonight I found it um and I was like, I got to read it tonight. I got to read it again tonight. You know, so I just wanted to come on and read. But anyway, I'm doing I'm doing a book. And then I think the second book I have is actually, it's a book of um, African-American lullabies. So I'll probably read a couple of pieces out of this. And then, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do tonight. So... The book that makes me smile. <laughs> Y'all, I love, love, love this book. If you do not have it, I highly suggest that you get Trombone Shorty in your library for the little. Trombone Shorty is so good. Like, I love it. Trump, this is a, um, a book about a real person. A, he was a little boy growing up in, in some parts of Louisiana. And he ended up growing up. He, you know, was into music. And he's still alive today and he does music but every year around a certain time every year he go back home and does concerts and stuff at home in Louisiana so anyway this is what we, the book that we're reading tonight is Trombone Shorty and it's by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews and it's illustrated by Cal Diana winner Brian Collier so let's get started Trombone Shorty. Where you at? Where you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking to. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So where you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning because this is a story about music. 
but before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important my hometown, my greatest, how it, before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Any time of day or night, you can hear the music floating in the air. And there was music in my house, too. My big brother James played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band, too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras! Parades fill the streets, and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I love the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where you at? Where you at? The, music was co- the musicians were called. <laughs> all day long, I could see the brass bands, pro- brass bands parade by my house while the neighbors danced along. I love these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together, just like how we make our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, and whatever's in the kitchen and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from all the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians in Treme. We were making music and that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and I headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled. Proud. Trombone shorty, he called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where you at? From that day on, everyone called me Trombone Shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hand. One day my mom surprised me with tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and bit biggest music festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and I started to play alone. He stopped his band at the mil- in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, that's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me overhead until I was standing on stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and I held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want to play, Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Dilla, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together and we called ourselves the 5 o'clock band 
because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in, the, in his band was, he proudly said, that's my brother, Trombone Shorty. Where you at? And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty and Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I play all around, all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out just like my brother did for me. Today, I play at the same New Orleans jazz festivals where I once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians all around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. Where you at? Where you at? I still keep my trombone in my hand and will never let it go. And that's the end of the story. So yeah, this is, like I said, one of my favorite, favorite books. This is Trombone Short, and um, you can, I'm pretty sure you can get it at pretty much any major bookstore. You can get it off Amazon. They probably have it on eBay. They may have it at the library, so if you just want to um, go check it out, just go check it out. Um, but if you can get it into your child's library, I suggest that you get just get them their own personal copy of Trombone Shorty. So that was that book. So now we're going to read a couple of pieces out of the um, Hush Songs book that I was um, telling you guys about earlier. And it is by Joyce Carol Thomas and the illustrations are by Brenda Joyce Hill. looking for it. Okay, we'll start with this piece. It's called Somebody's Bigger Than You and I. Somebody's Bigger Than You and I is at once an expression of wonder and the creation of the world in all its natural splendor and simultaneous and simultaneously a statement of profound religious conviction. This inspirational offering colored with the color in the vernacular reflects the personal belief in a higher power in somebody's bigger than you and I. Somebody's bigger than you and I has become a means of transmitting traditional faith to children. It's actually a song, but I'm just going to read the words. Okay, it says, Who made the mountains? Who made the trees? Who made the rivers flow out of the seas? When hung the, Who hung the moon in the starry sky? Somebody bigger than you and I. Who made the flowers to bloom in the spring? Tell me, tell me who writes the songs for the little robin to sing. And who sends the rain when the air seems to dry? Somebody bigger than you and I. You know who? God, he lights my way. When, when my road gets dark, he keeps me, God keeps me company with his love to guide you and the Lord. He walks right by, beside you, just like he walks right by, beside me. When I get so lonely, many times I'm filled with despair, and who gives me courage just to go on from there? And who gives me faith that will never, never die? Somebody bigger than you and I. So that was a good one. I like that. Let me see. We'll do maybe one. One more. Let me see. I'm trying to find a find one. Oh, here's one. Petal Child. Poetic in its power. This 1975 composition by Joyce Carol Thomas is an anthem of peace for all children. The song is about an imaginary toddler has the remarkable ability to make each child feel loved. Petal Child evokes the renewing promise of spring and creates the aura of, of a hush song, Tender and Sleepy Time Stop. So again, this is another song, but I'm just going to read the words. 
Laughing winds went sweeping by and found the first but of May but found and found the first bud of May. Then they danced around that petal child, the flower bit in her head to say, I hope the sun shines in your life. I hope the moonbeams bring you sleep. May lilacs spread their shade for you and magic birds your spirit keep. Laughing when dance in reply, they touched the perfect petals. They touched the perfect petals blue. Then sat around that sleepy child, humbling, humming the whole song through. I hope the metal lark sings songs for you and make your dreams clear as as May skies. I wish you I wish your blooms a peaceful stay and color for your petaled eyes. And that's the end of that story. So those were um the two books that we read tonight. Hush Songs is actually a song book of African American lullabies. So next time I didn't I didn't know that because I think this is my first time reading Hush Songs. I think I bought that book at, at a library sale. It, they had like a brown bag sale where you go and you get everything, everything you can get into a brown bag and the bag only costs like $5 and you just put as, as many books as you want that, that the bag can hold. And so um, I think this is my first time reading this book. So next time I choose this book, I'll just choose the selections that I'm going to read and I'll research and see the tune of the pieces that I, I chose that way I can actually sing it because I didn't know that but anyway <laughs> that's um, all we have for tonight I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week be safe go back to school and try to be amazing littles um, enjoy your well the holiday it's, it's, enjoy your week um as you know, we're, um, Interactive Man is also on YouTube, so don't forget to hit the like, and if you have it, subscribe. And if you're on the, just listening to the podcast, listen, like, share, and subscribe, please, to Interactive Man. It's World, where little player interacting. Until next week, this is Don, aka, aka the Interactive Nanny, signing out from Interactive Nanny's World, where love and play are interacting, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye.